Aptash, uh, Kataptanamu, I thank you all. Um, so I, I, before I would begin this morning uh, while speaking uh, on how to set this up, uh, I personally would love to hear a voice from the past, uh, someone who has clearly influenced myself. Um, we were not sure if anyone in the congregation is familiar with the former works or, or legacy legend of the man by the name of Slow Turtle Peters, uh, John Peters. Uh, he was a prominent medicine man of our nation, not just our community. Uh, he worked extensively throughout the state as commissioner on Indian affairs, which deals with political matters throughout the Commonwealth. However, he was directly involved with going into the prisons and conducting uh, sweat lodge ceremonies and other ceremonies for uh, the religious rights of indigenous and other incarcerated uh, individuals. So uh, it's a, something that meant much of his work is what has motivated me to continue doing the very same work. So I would like to basically just start with a very brief passage to help folks uh, see him and connect with the past uh, before I begin my talk. Thank you. purpose for being here was to try to preserve a space for seven generations of unborn yet to come here. And, and, and I've taken that very serious. And, uh, Thank you. Um, hopefully the audio was clear enough. Uh, it was a very concise message, uh, very brief, but very clear. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with Slow Turtle, uh, he was a construction worker throughout most of his life, uh, owned and opened his own construction businesses. And uh, much of that was being done uh, while he was given the task of being our medicine man. Um, and when I mentioned the medicine man for our community, I am a Mashpee Wampanoag. Wampanoag is a nation of many tribes and many villages. Mashpee is just one of those. Uh, Slow Turtle himself was asked to be the supreme medicine man over our entire nation, which meant although he was from Mashpee himself, his, uh, he oversaw uh, the spiritual ways of many other communities, uh, Wampanoag communities. So his influence has been throughout, not just Massachusetts, but throughout the region. Uh, I'm currently living in Connecticut and the tribes here have honored this man for the work that he has done here in this area as well. Uh, so I just wanted to let folks understand, you know, the, the creation story that I shared with you uh, obviously something I've heard uh, over and over throughout my life, uh, reinforced, embedded, and I'm very, very grateful to have uh, the parents that I've had to instill the values they did, um, to be part of a community, communities. Uh, I am a Mashpee Wampanoag through enrollment. Um, my mom is a Mashpee Wampanoag and we're, we're, matrilineal, we're matrilineal people. So you are what your mother's heritage is, uh, kind of like the Jewish belief. Uh, if your mom is Jewish, you are as well. Um, whereas my father is Nano Haganiak, the Narragansett tribe of Rhode Island is the reservation I was born and raised on in Charlestown, Rhode Island. Uh, currently here in uh, Connecticut, servicing the Mashantucket community. Any of you who ever visit Foxwoods are visiting the Pequot Reservation here in Connecticut. So very fortunate to be part of these New England communities and, and to have people like Slow Turtle in my life, setting the examples they did and um, having become a father uh, I've been very fortunate to be able to pass a lot of these lessons on, not only to my children, but as Steve mentioned in my intro, I also work a lot with the children of the public uh, through schools and other things. So um, this story that I mentioned, like I said, uh, it's a very important story because here we are in a, a very pivotal moment for this country and hopefully the world. Uh, it's a very hostile climate in some ways, but it's also a very positive climate because it seems people now are demanding change change that I think a lot of us believe should have taken place long before now and preferably without a lot of the tragedies that have brought us to this space and time that we are currently in. And I say we because uh, this is not a you you issue. This is not a Native American issue. This is for not just humanity. Um, so basically what I'm doing here is I've been lighting cedar um, for those of you who are familiar. Uh, we have many medicines, uh, sage, sweetgrass, uh, many medicines. 
Uh, cedar, in many ways, represents the East. Uh, being an Eastern woodland person, obviously, it's one of my preferred medicines and probably more accessible to myself than sage or others. But um, all things start in the East. And uh, I'm very grateful that we were able to start uh, our connection today to work together uh, to, to at least open your doors to hear Indigenous teachings, uh, teachings that you have now shared with your children, and hopefully they can carry on some of these teachings. Uh, by no way am I here to convert or uh, take away from others' uh, beliefs or teachings, but to share ours. So uh, as you noticed, I opened with a Native American church hymn. I myself, I'm not a participant in Native American church. Um, when I was younger, my mom did from time to time participate at churches. Um, that she would bring us to. Um, it was not a, a standard thing for our family, uh, but majority of the time it was spiritual gatherings for us to heal and, and do our prayer. So, and in, in also in, uh, I guess, kind of closing today, um, that was not just a Native American church song. It was uh, specifically uh, uh, from the Navajo nation. Um, for those of you who may be familiar, uh, their nation is the largest group of Native people on this continent, on Turtle Island. Uh, they have made a connection with me as an individual and not only am I lighting cedar for us in our prayers today, but I ask everybody usually to help uh, with some of the things that I've been asked to take on. Um, one of which is this eagle fan that I'm using right now. Um, this eagle fan is one of the most sacred objects we as indigenous people can possess. Um, it allows us to communicate with the spirit world. Uh, eagles fly higher and closer to the spirit world. So we use this as a way to communicate. So I'm basically just waving these prayers because uh, this fan itself was presented to me by the Navajo Nation during a drought, during a time when they needed water. And I want to say that many of you out in Western Mass are, are very fortunate to have the amount of water and resources that we do, uh, particularly out on the coastline where we're surrounded by the ocean. Um, so I encourage all of you, any opportunity you can, to simply walk to the water, uh, introduce yourself to the water. Um, interact with the water and as the Navajo people mentioned, simply putting your hands in the water and rinsing them as a form of giving thanks for that water. Um, and if you can please keep my Navajo or Diné people, Diné is the term that they call themselves. Uh, Navajo apparently means thief in Spanish. and I don't think that was what they called themselves originally, but uh, the Diné people have presented me with this fan and asked to help them receive rain. Uh, I think many of us are aware with the fires that are going on in California. I recently returned from my trip there and I was shocked. I was hurt. Uh, I was almost moved to tears when uh, a gentleman from California who was there said that it had not rained since March there. So I'm basically just sending a lot of prayers out for the land, uh, for our environment. And I guess I'm going to end on that note that for us as Indigenous people, as, as Slow Turtle mentioned, we think of the seven generations unborn. And that's not just human beings. Uh, when we think of world peace, when we think of peace on earth, I want everyone to please be reminded that we need to have peace amongst our environment as well. Uh, when our homes face the east, that's working with the environment rather than against it. Uh, myself, personally, it's very hard to be comfortable in any square home or square structure. And it's another reason I'm burning as much cedar as I possibly can uh, as we go through these prayers. Uh, we work against nature, we work against ourselves. So uh, as I was saying earlier, uh, we always try to use the term, be in the circle or be square. So <laughs> I send these prayers off to you folks and I thank you all for sharing uh, this time with me and allowing me to share our messages with you. Cool.